this is Pamela from Hello Health and the Encouraging Wellness Podcast. And today I have David Eisenberg from Magic Roots. Uh, David's journey is a really cool one. Um, he founded Magic Roots in 2018, creating lots of full plant, plant products that are naturally infused using traditional methods of making the plants more palatable and easier to use. And um, infusion is a really delicate process of soaking the botanical plants that are volatile and dissolve readily to release their active ingredients, nutrients, and vital healing properties gradually into water oil, um, like steeping tea. So that way, um, it's done in a. He's learned how to do this in a very clean and and incredible way, as well as he has gone into full plant, which means everything is used, including the roots for all products. And he will walk us through uh, a lot of his health and wellness journey, how and why he started uh, Magic Roots after many years of working in the pharmaceutical industry, retail, wholesale, running his own companies, uh, was introduced to CBD, whole plant hemp in 2017. And it led him into much deeper findings that um, allow for plants to be good uses for things like cancer, pain, sleep, and even building blocks. So, uh, he lives in California and is super excited to have David with us here today. So David, thank you. Well, thank you for having me. I, I really appreciate the time. And uh, it's encouraging uh, to, as, your, as it says on your, as your statement here, um, it is encouraging to be able to um, come into uh, this realm and be able to help people uh, understand more about the plants that we've lost sight of. So, yeah. So tell us more about your background and how you kind of have gotten through this journey that you're, that you're on. Yeah. So, um, uh, I started, uh, in pharmaceutical and, uh, a long time ago <laughs> and uh, did 20 years in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, not really understanding or knowing a lot about it, but learning as I went and, um, uh, everything from diabetes care uh, to actually teaching doctors and lab te technicians how to run equipments and or tests, um, everything from uh, insulin pumps to uh, slide-based essays for uh, lupus, determining lupus, um, to teaching techs how to run um, big test machines for HPLCs and things of that nature. Um, and I saw, and I also worked in the other side, uh, in the laboratories and things of that nature. And I saw some of the things that went on in that industry. Um, and it was good. Um, but at 20, I was done. I had enough. Um, it was, it was a rough industry. It had its, its ups, its downs. There were good people, bad people. It lasts in any industry. Um, and, uh, then started my journey into uh, my own businesses and started to educate myself in the business side. 2017 rolled around um, and some friends of our family actually introduced me to CBD um, and needed to use that for some family issues too. Um, started doing my research and uh, in the beginning, CBD or hemp, as it as it actually is um, was in its infancy actually they called prohibition back then <laughs> and uh, started doing my research to find out you know that it was a super important plant for our health um, as it's the only plant on earth that has as many cannabinoids 144 plus possibly at this point um, and 400 different compounds that actually marry up to our own bodies, um, meaning that symbionically it's connected to us in that many places. And, um, <clears throat> and they synthesize into our own. And as I started to learn more about how it worked in our, immu in our immune system, in our endocannabinoid for health and all well being, um, I started to work in the industry and started to actually sell a product. Um, uh, fell out of the situation with the friends uh, that I started with for uh, integrity reasons of my, you know, my own good integrity reasons um, and started my company um, to actually be able to bring integrity to what I did 
um, and what I was selling. Um, so, yeah, so it was important to come to that full circle uh, to get to where I am today. So I find it very interesting. No, that's this awesome. industry. Yeah. It, it is super, super interesting. And, you know, it's not just, uh, you know, you kind of touched on it with the labs, but it's also uh, the way the herbs are collected, the way they're extracted, oh. the way that they're presented. I mean, the, you know, there's some people that use really harsh chemicals to pull nutrients out and that doesn't always leave it to be the most nutritious for the body. I mean, right. um, so tell us a little bit about some of the plants and herbs that you enjoy working with that you've seen to make a difference in people's lives. Um, some of the methods that you use to extract and infuse and what that looks like. Yeah. So yeah, touching on that base of where the plants come from, so important. Um, you know, you can buy them online now anywhere and, uh, and, uh, all these are coming from many, many different places. But to find the products in the place where they're supposed to be grown. So like when I, I buy mushrooms, um, like your lion's mane, um, chagas and things of that nature. Um, and I make it a point to shop the person and the people and the place that I'm buying it before I even step off the plate. Um, so like just the mushrooms that I buy come from a 20 year plus farm that wild harvests on their own property. Um, and it's a family business been there for, like I said, plus 20 years, they grow it in the right substrate, which brings the immunity into, um, the product, the, the first part of it. Um, and then what you do with it after that is also equally important. Everything from encapsulating it in the right ca clean capsule to putting it in the right oils. Um, so I, uh, I basically make sure that when I'm putting something out, it is the best of the best that I can find anywhere. <laughs> and uh, to me, that makes sense because it actually will now offer the results that are needed. So if it's an herb and it's earth, you know, earth grown in the sun, very important. Um, as we have, you know, all these different lighting elements now. Um, and we, in the cannabis or industry, there's a lot going on. And a lot of people don't realize this, but there's a lot going on with plant hormones and they're sticking plant hormones under the plants to actually make them better, stronger, and uh, grow faster. So I figure that as being an interesting experiment coming forth uh, in the near future, we'll find out what the results are. But uh, I like my plants to be naturally harvested, naturally grown, organically um, soiled, so on and so forth. So um, I'm very meticulous in what I'm putting into my products first. Um, and then everything to the capsule and the oil. Our process is really different than, than extraction. Extraction comes through as a machine that forcibly pushes the oil out. Um, what our proprietary uh, methodology that we've used is um, we're actually soaking it in my method, um, the plant into a, a fractionated coconut, which is different than an MCT. Um, and, uh, then we're actually letting the plant homogeneously move into the oil. Um, and then this way you're getting the full body of the plant in the oil, um, by osmosis, so to say. <laughs> so, but to touch on this for a second, cause you just skipped over something, which is kind of yes. cool. Talk about what is a fractionated coconut oil versus an MCT oil. Okay. Yeah. So an MCT, um, is a single cell um, type of triglyceride, okay? And so you uh, MCT is gonna be a single triglyceride in the way it's manufactured, it's processed to get there. And um, a fractionated is a little different process. Again, it's another homogeneous process of extracting or not extracting, but getting the fat off of the, um, the coconut fat off of the oil, and you're still left with the two uh, medium chain triglycerides in the fractionated. So it's a little different than an MCT, costs a little bit more 
because of the way it's made and the way that they have to take the fat off. And then on top of that, it has its own healing properties. Um, they've seen progress with just the fractionated for epilepsy and many other things, just the oil before you put anything in it. So it already has its own healing properties before we actually infuse. So that's another one that's really important. Yes, thank you. Sorry, so, but then talk about some of the plants and herbs that you really have seen some incredible, um, you know, obviously you, you offer um, more of a B2B model for, for companies to purchase products from you rather than consumers, but um, you've got a very unique set of, of products that have some really neat um, herbs um, that thank you with some pretty incredible healing properties. So talk about some of those. Thank you. Yes. Luckily I've had herbs come to me. <laughs> um, they've actually contacted me and everybody finds that really funny. Um, in my family, they all like, wow, what do they do? Reach out and call you. And I'm like, oh yeah, sure. But um, like one is fireweed. Um, fireweed's uh, an interesting plant. It's been around for a millennial. It's been used by the Induit um, in their dietary on a regular basis uh, since the beginning <laughs> of their time because it grows wild up in the Northwest. Um, but the properties that exist in there and why I found it or found me was um, first off, I found it for prostate. And um, the first thing that I found out that it did was it'll shrink a prostate down. And um, I've actually seen cases uh, or testimonials of people that have been uh, PS, they've had their PSA at 10 and within a matter of a month, their PSA has gone down to about a one by taking three doses a day of the fireweed we make. Um, and so that's just one of the herbs, but what we are, are doing things like lion's mane, um, which would be a nice mushroom for a cognitive. And then we're mixing some products together kind of like our CBG, which is the mother cannabinoid in the hemp plant um, and the uh, the lion's mane. And we're actually seeing improvements um, for Alzheimer's, dementia, and Parkinson's. Um, and because the plants are grown in the correct substrates, they actually have more action that way, which to me is the most important part is if we can get them to do something within us uh, correctively. And same thing I do with the hemp too. Um, and hemp has so many different good properties, everything from being able to uh, neutralize cancer um, to the CBG, um, working on tumors and things of that nature. Um, uh, passion potion uh, we made for, um, for some people that were having some issues because it heightens um, the sexual arousal. It also helps with uh, any kind of dysfunctions that may be happening, male or female, and uh, brings a libido right back into uh, the place where it needs to be to be healthy. Um, there, uh, what else? We have uh, <laughs> ashwagandha, uh, uh, very popular now, um, very, very good for testosterone uh, and uh, also for estrogen. Um, but now we're making some other things um, like a prenatal, I think uh, you noticed our prenatal uh, has the red raspberry leaf in there. Very fantastic herb. Um, and we're creating other things. Our oregano, we've, we've done an old fashioned, but we've given it a new twist by infusing it now. Most of the old time uh, people that make oregano make tinctures with alcohol and they have a horrible taste. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was able to actually make it have a nice flavor um, for an oregano and still work robustly in your body. Um, and it's, it's amazing because um, these things, you know, have been time tested, but they've just not been kind of molded or modernized to what we now have. And that's really kind of a thing that I'm doing is infusing um, the, the products and then also the capsules too. So we're also making the capsules, which, well, they stand the, the test of time. They, they, they have a good shelf, great shelf life as you've found too. So, 
Yeah, scan they, them yeah. using real vegan fully and um, and, directly. And they it. seal the oxygen out. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's it's really good. And I don't think that a lot of people realize how important oregano is um, for gut health. Oh no, you know, no, it is. Yeah, no, it's. I mean, it's amazing because it is the herbal equal to penicillin mm -hmm. and uh and it works in many different applications in, in your mouth on the skin um i have a friend of mine who's a, a veteran a vietnam vet and his thin skin's very thin so he gets cuts and he buys my oregano puts it on his cuts and he says and it heals like that he says no infections no nothing and he's like man he goes why oh, didn't you come up with this earlier <laughs> that's all he said he says to me he's like, because <laughs> it like it just it heals his skin really fast you know yeah so. well and you touched on it a little bit cbg with tumors and so my mom's been um dealing with stage four cancer for for years um and part of what she believes has kept her around is she takes cbg in the morning or mid-morning and then her cbn at night um and it helps with you know reducing uh, the size of the tumors and with inflammation and with sleep and discomfort and then that way she doesn't have to rely on Tylenol and Advil, which she would, shouldn't be doing with her, with her kidneys anyway. Yeah, it actually it fires up the body. Um, so the CBG goes in, it's adaptogenic, um, and it fires up the body's own immune system. Um, so it's really taking and helping your body with the properties that it needs. Um, and on the tumor side of things, what it does um, in the research that I've done, which I do a, a lot of research, I pull studies off. Um, it's a it, CBG is very interesting. It will actually kill a MRSA virus, which is a, a drug resistant virus created in the hospital. Um, and it does that by piercing through the protein cell, um, and getting into the nucleus and killing the nucleus. Same process that has to happen for a tumor so to say, has to get past that barrier. And uh, amazing CBG has uh, come to its own, but not well looked at. Um, one thing that I do that's different than a lot of people in the, that industry is I claim uh, the facts because of my testing. And that is, is the way that I make my product the CBGA, which is an acid complex on the back end of either CBDA or CBGA, is in the plant naturally. Um, and when they get processed through machines, that acid drops off because it's a very sensitive molecule. Um, and it's a very important molecule. And through mine, my process of making the products, um, the CBDA is still able to be found in the tests as the highest number as it is naturally in the plant. Um, and that is very important for distribution of the body and getting through the stomach, the A, because the acid doesn't fight with the stomach acid at that point, it actually gets through um, and works in a little different way at that point in processing through the body. Um, and then pierces through to actually shrink tumors. Um, just, I don't know if you want me to talk about a study that um, we did with, I think it's super. Oh, so one of my neighbor's dogs had tumors and this works the same way with all, um, all mammals on earth, the CBD and the CBG work well with all mammals on earth. Um, and so it's going to work almost the same with us, with our pets. And, uh, when <clears throat> they came to me, they came to me and they had already had two operations to remove two tumors from their pet and their dog was lethargic not doing well they asked me for some cbda can just to make them comfortable because we're probably going to put them down and i said well what's going on with your dog and um and they told me and i said well here try this put it on two to three times a day and um they started putting on the cbg on the tumor direct on the skin and within a matter of a week, the tumor dropped and went down, subsided. The dog was up, walking around, wagging its tail and eating again. That's awesome. Whereas, so 
Um, and that was um, around Thanksgiving of last year. <laughs> so um, happy to report that dog is doing well. Um, and so uh, there is a plant, there are plants that have the ability to actually help us through certain situations. We only have to seek them out. Um, and I think hemp is one of those because it has the 144 different cannabinoids that marry up to our body, uh, what we already have inside of us. Uh, I believe it's a, one of the most important plants in our arsenal of life. Yeah, no, it's awesome. You know, and there's a lot of discussion now around um, psilocybin. I believe that's how it's pronounced. I'm yes. Might yes. be messing up. You're, if not, you're close because I'm gonna I'm gonna mess up the pronunciation too. So. <laughs> yeah, which some people might call magic mushrooms or, you know, so tell us a little bit about what, what you know in this space and, and what you think is yeah. valuable. Yeah, so um, about almost maybe almost a year ago, I had a friend of mine who was a nurse and she was getting very recluse. So she was having a problem and she she was taking my, my uh, CBDA products and she asked me, would you be willing to make me a mushroom? Uh, uh, magic mushroom infusion. And I was like, well, let me research it first and find out. Um, and it took me a few months to really get dig in to figure out how it's going to work and how it would, the mechanics of, of infusing the mushroom into the oil um, and, um, and what the numbers needed to be, so on and so forth. And I kind of came up with a recipe and put it together and, um, uh, in California, we're in a prohibition in that right now, <laughs> possibly going to be uh, legalized by the by uh, by this year, by the end of this year. It is legal in certain areas of California. Um, and one thing that I do know about it is that it actually works really great in the cognitive area of the brain um, for rewiring, rerouting thoughts. And uh, so by able by my abilities to infuse it um, we were able to get rid of the harsh taste of the mushroom <laughs> uh, we were also able to get rid of the gut issues that usually come or are associated with mushrooms where people will feel their gut kind of feel a little bad um, depending on the mushrooms they're taking and uh, we're able to actually set it up so that it was a nice micro dose um, she started taking um, the mushroom infusion and said, wow, I don't know how you did this, but this is perfect. And you nailed it the first time. And she says, and I'm already feeling better. Um, and so uh, she now is back to her normal nursing, going out socially, being good in society again. Um, and what basically is happening with the mushrooms is that and just in a PTSD, um, what happens with us is we'll get stuck in what they call a, like a loop video in our playing in our head. That's how I, that's the only way I can describe it. So you have a little loop video running in your head and it just plays over and over and over and over again. And it's stuck in your head. And that's that subconscious area that's just stuck there. So with the mushrooms in a micro dose in a small amount, doesn't get you really high because it's not meant to do that. It's meant to go in, might make colors a little more vivid. It might make your focus a little more intense and it might make you heightened awareness of everything around you. What it's doing is actually helping that loop video that you have, it's actually helping rewire around it. So the loop video can play but you now have a new thought path that you can use around that video. It's the best way I can describe it awesome. so that you can clearly think forward instead of being stuck in that past situation. So with that in mind, if it's making you more focused, is it the, the kind of thing that you would take with breakfast, mid morning, lunch, or is it more of a nighttime, let your brain kind of read five while it's not overly stimulated herbs are interesting in all aspects because they are really something you need to have um, your own heightened uh, sense of feel for mm -hmm. and i always tell everybody 
that you have to be able to understand what your body's telling you when you're taking them and when you're not. You should always take a break from herbs, uh, wh whether it be a day or two to let your body reset. Mm -hmm. um, but the other side of this is, is that dosing is really personal and should be personal as to how you feel. So, um, so what we're seeing is, is people are taking different levels um, and doses to actually do the, the modulation for their body. Um, and so it, it becomes more of a personal situation also when they take it, because if they're having problems, sleep issues at night, maybe they should take it at night. If they want to have a heightened sense of awareness during the day, maybe they take it in the morning, let it go all day long. If they feel like their afternoons are where their crunch is, maybe they want to take it in the afternoon to get past that crunch. Mm -hmm. So it is a personal, I believe it's a personal thing. And once you get a feel for it, you, you should be able to understand where, where it applies. No, that's As with all herbs. <laughs> Yeah, now it's incredible. So what are common questions that people come to you with? Oh, well, it, am I going to get high? <laughs> and uh, normally, no, not not the way I do things. Um, I'm not I'm not here to make people high. I'm here to actually help them through the heal process. Um, so a lot of people ask me, well, why don't you do gummies? And I said, because gummies don't represent um, a healthful medicine they to me that's just my own personal um they ask about the hemp and what it's going to do am i going to feel high or this and that um, especially when you're i do something that's different than rso i do a rsho which is a, a rick simpson hemp oil um, which is made directly from hemp and there is very low thc in there um, and that product um, does the same thing as the RSO that gets you high. Um, so, and then we have a CBG one too that we make, an RSO CBG. Um, so they always ask, am I gonna get high? <laughs> and usually not. Now, if you took enough of like the mushroom infusion, there's a possibility, but you could take a lot of all kinds of different herbs and, and have, a, have an effect and um, it's just a matter of, you know, what your body is used to, what your body's not used to, what the effect will be, um, and is it sustainable on your body? So, um, <laughs> but those are the, those are the really big questions. Like if you microdose the mushrooms, you're not going to get out of, you're not going to lose control or be out of control. I've had some of the most, uh, the most questions have been on the mushrooms. And most people are like, well, I'm scared. And I said, well, do it on a weekend, start off with a quarter. And then they said, wow, I used a quarter and it was good. It was, uh, but I moved up to a half and it was better. And I'm like, okay, good. <laughs> I'm all great. And it was like better because the colors were more vivid. Flowers were prettier and, you know, just jumping, you know, like kind of like, wow, beautiful right there. And I was at a heightened state of alert with everything around me and more, you know, thoughtful about everything that was happening in that moment where I was, um, not to be high, but to be conscious of the moment. Mm -hmm. And I was like, perfect. That's the right place for you then. <laughs> so, and that's where personal, personal comes in. Uh, uh, that's, I think that's the hardest part for all of us in this industry is to teach people how to be consciously aware of themselves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, as we think about success stories, obviously you touched on prostate, you touched on cancer, um, you've touched on Parkinson's, anything else that, you know, comes to mind that we forgot to mention? Well, just basically pain. Um, a lot of people have pain. Um, and when you get into that situation, you're, you're, you know, there's all these drugs that are out there um, <laughs> that can be prescribed for that. Um, are they fixing the problem? No, basically they're kind of masking the problem. Um, the RSHO is probably like a really great pain relief. The RSHO, um, I've had people that have gone through surgeries 
in the hospital, um, I had a lady that f- had her neck fused because she had a problem and she refused any, any meds in the hospital. Only thing she took was my RSHO for pain and totally worked for her. She just so took a bunch of it. You feel high. Nope. Nope. If anything, you'll get tired, but that's because your body at rest heals best. So if you listen to it, you'll be healing better when you're asleep. And um, so she took a lot of RSHO. Um, their um, healing. Um, uh, I have another lady that had a thyroid problem and it was corrected um, with our, our CBDA. And uh, she, I mean, there's so many, the fireweed, uh um, I can tell you a story about a boy who's seven years old that had a, a bad incontinent problem um, with his bowels and a uh, very sad story because the doctors said, well, there's nothing we can do and we don't know what's causing it, but you can take and have, give him an enema every day before school so he can make it through school. And they came to me and they said, well, what do we do? And I said, well, if you give him an enema every day, he's going to be having a bag by the time he's 10 years old. I said, because it's going to rupture something eventually and you're going to have a problem. Um, and I said, so let's start with the fire wheat on the weekend and see what happens. Give it to him three times a day. Well, he hasn't had an enema since. And he now is playing softball. Um, he goes to school. Uh, you know, questions are good solutions are good um there's solutions for all kinds of different uh things that go on in life with um herbs and and we just we basically have the ability to heal ourselves with the right with the right recipes well and um, fireweed in particular it has anti-parasitic properties is that right or yes has antimicrobial antibacterial um, it has vitamin C has, I think a vitamin D it, ha- <laughs> it it is loaded. It is a amazing plant. I always look at plants from an aspect of, um, at this point in my life from how they operate in, on, on earth. And so fireweed, uh, interestingly enough, uh, in Alaska, if they clear cut a forest or, bur- or burns, the first plant to come up and enrich the soil is fireweed. Mm-hmm. So it starts what we call new growth and replenishes the soil and starts everything over again. So I always look at it that if that's what it does in nature, we're another, we're just a smaller ecosystem. So when we take the fireweed, it re- reboots the system and, uh, and it does exactly what it does out there in the wild. And uh, so... I like to think that that's how the plants work inside of our ecosystem because we're just a smaller version of the forest. Yeah, no, and I totally agree. (laughs) And I, you know, I think there's so much time spent on taking prebiotics and probiotics, but we all also need to really, really be clear and thoughtful about making sure that we're taking certain herbs that clean up the gut too, that are antibacterial, antiviral. Yeah. Well, we're, we're very, very set on our, our vitamins. Yes. (laughs) And that's only half of the whole situation. Vitamins are only like 50% of, of the, of the real deal. So, you know, you can get the vitamin C here, but if you eat the orange, you get all this. Yeah, exactly. So, so I always look at it this way is that you can take the vitamin C, which is great, but, but get some herbs in there too. get some other things going on because they're also going to help the vitamin C work better. Um, you know, besides eating the orange too. And if you don't want to eat the orange, then eat the vitamin C, but also take some herbs to balance your body out. Um, we, you know, with the foods and things that we have today, um, we're not getting the actual nourishment that we need out of them. Um, so fireweed for me is one of the first things that people should all take to clean out the gut, get the extra candidas out get that gut flora working again so we can actually absorb food um, efficiently and effectively. And then we can start moving down that path, change our diet, all those, all those things that have to happen uh, alongside of just that 
first scenario. So. Good. Well, thank you. Um, anything I forgot to ask about or anything you want to mention? I don't think, I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. But All right. And it, then if people want to find out more about you and some of the research and any information you have, where, where can they find you? Um, our, we have a website. Um, I do not sell direct. We're a business to business company. Um, and, uh, but they can still call and ask me questions. I'm happy to answer some questions, but we are magic with a K roots.com. And, uh, and uh, we, you know, we are just really looking to help change people's lives. That's that's really if you, you, you know, I think that a lot, there's a whole movement and a collective of human beings at this point that are now connecting like you and I um, that really want to be able to help people change their lives. And we're now making a movement to show them that there's plants that are involved with that change. Aside from the diet, aside from, you know, <laughs> One thing I'm going to tell you, and this is just a quick note, my son, he's 17 years old, very healthy. He said to me yesterday, he says, you know, McDonald's now has this new um, shake out um, based on, yeah, on the Grimace. Yeah. He says, but it tastes like vanilla. Uh Okay. But if you eat French fries, it'll taste like berries. It's a chemical reaction between the two. And I was, and he says, I'm never eating there again. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and i said well well how long has it been he goes, oh well yeah but that just goes to show you that they're selling us chemical reactions yeah. and um and i think it's um coming from a 17 year old boy it's 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 very interesting because i hope we can can for us we can teach this to our children to carry this on to help keep changing that reality that that's here so we can become a healthier uh, race of humans and live like they used to back in the old days, 300 years old. Um, Well, thank you so much. We really appreciate it, David.